Hello, uh, today I'm going to do a deep dive into the Pioneer SR202W Spring Reverb Amplifier. Pioneer developed the SR202 in the 70s and sold it until 77. It was originally designed for consumers to add reverb to their own recordings. Like a lot of other vintage consumer grade gear, the uh, SR202 has over the past few years got a lot of attention. Um, it has been touted as the reverb secret weapon. So in this video, I'm going to try it out on a bunch of sources and show you how it sounds. Uh, then you can decide whether or not you want to track one down. They're still fairly affordable if you can find one, uh, not 80s or 90s affordable. I bought mine at a garage sale 30 years ago for practically nothing, but you can still find them for a reasonable amount of money. Anyway, uh, first I'll talk a bit about the 202 and show you how I use it. Then I'll do a bit of a geeky sound test with some scopes, uh, then on to the musical examples. I'll put an index in the description for those of you who want to skip around. Uh, let's get to it. First off, this thing is solid. No plastic, solid wood, and metal. Even the knobs feel great. Listen to that. Big click. They really built things well back then. Okay, uh, Pioneer called this a stereo unit, but it's not entirely true. You can send stereo signals into it, but there is only one reverb tank, so the left and right signals are summed to mono, then back to stereo on output. Now that's no big deal, most of the uh, professional studio reverbs of that time were also mono. It's part of the sound. There's a bunch of different controls and inputs for tape machines, not needed for what we'll be doing. Uh, a lot of the time if you buy a modded up unit, they'll disconnect these knobs. This big knob is the reverb time knob. There's a cool display and it shows amplification reverb time. In reality, the reverb time is not really adjusted. It's more about density and volume. Uh, more about that later. Let's check out the back connections. Depending on how you set up the 202, you can get a combination of dry wet signal. Uh, for this video, I'll be using it on a mono send, so I want full wet. So to get a full wet signal, I plug one input into one side and the output from the other side. If I was using it as an insert and wanted a mix of wet and dry, I'd plug both in and outs to the same channel. You'll probably never use the tape inputs unless you're planning on using it in the way it was originally intended. Okay, audio geek out time. So here's the setup. I'm in Studio One for now. Uh, let me explain the signal chain. I've got a tone generator plugin that we'll use to send test signals into the 202. After the tone generator, I've got an EQ that we can use to monitor frequency response, followed by Pipeline, which is an external I.O. plugin that will send the signal out and bring it back from the 202. And finally, another EQ so we can see as well as hear how the 202 is altering the test signal. I'm going to start with some white noise. White noise has pretty much equal amplitude across the entire frequency spectrum, so if we send it into the 202, we'll be able to hear as well as see uh, how it affects different frequency ranges. Okay, I'm going to turn up reverb time, which as you can see is really more reverb volume than time. Let's see what we get. Okay, there we go. This display on this thing is so cool. Uh, let's bring this back down a little bit. Actually, first, uh, let's uh, freeze the screen. All right, that's easier to see. So we're obviously not getting too much highs or lows. Looks like there might be a bandpass filter in there or something. Uh, we should check that out, see if it's in the schematics. But anyway, uh, we're getting almost nothing above 5K or below 30 Hertz, and it looks like there's a pretty big peak around 400 Hertz. And it looks as though we get unity gain with the reverb time knob about halfway. All right, let's try sending a sine wave with a logarithmic sweep from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000. Yeah, so from the sweep, we hear pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, let's go in and target that 400 hertz area. 
manually. Yeah, you can see, there we go, look. It's really peaking, it's clipping. Yeah, let me turn it down, the reverb time a bit. Oops. Sounds like a ghost. Yeah, there's a clip again. Yeah, so it just means we got to be careful with the um, the low mids around there, two to four hundred range. Sounds like old sci-fi. Cool. I should remember to make sure I don't talk through all the tales. They sound pretty good on this thing. Okay, let's get on some musical examples. Since I normally talk about synths on this channel, let's start there. I've got the Pioneer on an effects bus again with an I.O. plugin. Just set the ins and outs and your hardware becomes a plugin. Send a ping to automatically compensate for latency. I'm going to use my little Roland System 500 for this. Okay, got a sequence going. Just listen to the dry signal. And I'll slowly bring up our send and bring in some reverb. That's about 50% wet. see how the reverb time knob affects the sound. Gets louder and a bit more dense. And I'll bring it back to a little bit more tasteful level. Yeah, I like that. and wet again great it's a nice really warm verb sound sounds pretty good on a solo synth but of course it's important to hear how it sounds in a mix so let's bring in the band Okay, let's have a closer listen to those reverb tails, and I'll make sure I don't talk through them all. So I guess the best place to start is probably with the snare drum. Obviously use uh, reverb on the snare all the time. There's my dry snare. And let's bring in some verb. Yeah, we can really hear those tails now. Sounds cool. I don't know if this is the mix I'd use very often, though. Sounds pretty good there, though. Definitely a pretty unique sound. Dry. Wet. Oh, 
Okay, let's try something out here. Not exactly sure how this will sound. Let's uh, crank up the send here. I'm gonna try this as a gated reverb like they used to use in the 80s and all those old Phil Collins records, other 80s pop tunes. Okay, so opening the pipeline and just gonna bring the wet dry mix on my send. So right now we're just listening to the verb. Um, 6040 wet dry and I'll bring up a oh that gate was pretty much ready to go not bad I don't know if it sounds like Phil Collins but kind of cool let's try the rest of the kit here's the drums dry normally when I'm mixing I'm not going to send the entire drum bus to the reverb but uh Give it a try. Pretty boingy in the low mids. It's okay around there. Dry. Wet. Okay, let's take it off the drum bus and just try putting it on the snare mic only. Mm, it's okay. Here's the snare mic solo, quite a bit of bleed. Okay, well, one of my favorite tricks is to um, put the verb on the room mics. So um, first we're gonna bring up the room mics here. And they're soloed. And I'm gonna compress these, I'm gonna crush the room. There we go. It's pretty crushed. Okay, and bring up the verb on there. So this is just the room mics with the uh, reverb. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I haven't tried any EQ yet, and that's obviously a big part of using um, Reverb. This is pre send EQ, and let's just try a um, high pass filter. Bring it up to around 325 hertz, just under the snare, and crank up the highs. Oh, that's pretty cool. Getting more spring boing, that's for sure. As you can hear, the 202 is a spring reverb, but it's not springy like a Grampian or a Fender amp. But it actually sounds pretty good. I think I like it there. Okay, let's bring in the bass and the synth. drums. Dry. And wet. Cool. 
I kind of like the EQ on the verb like that, so I'm going to export that uh, reverb stem so I can take the EQ off for the other instruments and have my room sound. All right, pretty much never use reverb on bass. Let, let's try it. All right, let's solo that uh, reverb stem I just exported. That's the uh, verb from the room mics. You know, it sounds pretty good. Um, very unique sound. I wouldn't say I prefer it over an EMT 140 or an AKG BX20 or even plugins, but pretty cool. Okay, let's try it on bass. I mean, you never know. Okay, let's try the EQ we used on the drums. Bring it down a bit. Here's dry. And wet. Okay, let's bring in the band and hear it in context. Dry. And wet. Actually, kind of pleasantly surprised. It's kind of sitting with the drums a bit better. Bring in the synth. Nice. Okay, let's try it out on the synth pad. We'll try the uh, Dave Smith Mofo X4. Nice swoopy pad. Let's uh, clean up the mixer so we can see a bit better. Yeah, there's our synth pad and to the right, the reverb send. Let's bring in the verb. Ah, sounds good. Uh, maybe a bit too much resonance in the low mids, but workable. Try it dry. And wet. Okay, let's do some more EQing again. This is pre-send again. 400 hertz, solo it, just hear it a bit better. EQ back in. A little bit more balanced. Bring up some highs. Okay, let's try another good little trick for uh, mono signals. We're going to use an imager. I'm going to use um, Isotope's Ozone imager for this. Solo the verb again. Yeah, sounds nice. Bypass it. I've got the crossover set at 600 hertz, so it's really only going to affect the highs. Have to be careful with imagers with phasing issues. But this does sound pretty good. Okay, it's bringing the band. Try 
wet dry. Bring it back. The uh, 202 Super Power is really more of glue than reverb. It really helps everything sit in the same space. Nice. Okay, if there's one instrument that likes spring verb, it's guitar. Let's give it a go. Sounds good. Let's try a little bit more density. Not exactly a Fender or um, Accutronic sound, but pretty cool. Let's bring it back a little bit. I like that. Let's see how it sounds in a higher register. Okay, let's try some EQ out. I think I'm just gonna roll off the lows. Okay, I like that. Try it dry. And wet. And in context. And uh, let's try a little bit more on the guitar. Let's take out the reverb. Nice subtle glue. Okay, let's try it on roads. Try the EQ again. A little more sparkle. I like it. down a little bit on the roads. Uh, oops. There we go. Roads. 
dry. And back. Great. Yeah, it's starting to come along. Okay, on to the instruments I actually use this thing the most on. Horns. Clean up this view again. Okay. Let's bring in the reverb. Just bring it up slowly. It's probably good there. But let's just keep going. Let's go over the top for a second. Yeah, it's over the top, all right. Let's try the EQ. Okay, let's bring this in down a bit. It's pretty bright. I don't think we need it for the horns. No, it is a bit muddy. Okay, I'll just keep the uh, high pass and bring down the high boost. That's nice. And bring it down a bit more. Sweet. Dry. And wet. Pioneer 202 sounds like. <laughs> sounds like an old-timey radio. This is full wet, obviously. I don't think I've ever used this on a full mix before. It's worth exploring again some other time. Great. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you again another time. Sure.